We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. We stand in awe of you, my God and my Father, that you would come and visit with us this morning. Everybody lift up your right hand and give him a wave offering. He's in this place. He is in this place. Father, you are in this place. We exalt you. We magnify your name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. I said in Jesus' mighty name. Are you glad to be in Zion? Are you happy to be here? Come on, lift those hands above your head and give him a round of applause. Hallelujah. Amen. Give him a round of applause. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Come on, give it to the Lord of Lords and the King of Lords. Amen. You may have your seats in the name of the Lord. It's an honor, it's a privilege to be in the presence of the Lord this morning and all our online family. We welcome you into this service. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on in here. Let us clap our hands together for the online family. You will be blessed that you came. Amen and amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I have a word for you this morning by the grace of the Lord. And every one of you who made, made it to Zion, we appreciate you. We thank God for you. Put your hands together for yourself. Do you have your Bible? Amen. I ask you have your Bible. I see some people folding their hands. Amen. This is JCC. Pull out, out your Bible, pull out your notebook and your pen and get ready for the word of God as we look up from the book of Genesis. Somebody say Genesis. And you're going to help me up here. Amen. Genesis 21. Hallelujah. That sounds better. Thank you so much. Genesis 21. Somebody say Genesis 21. And let me do some housekeeping, amen. Is it okay for me to do some housekeeping? Amen. When you come to the house of God, don't be distracted by Facebook Live. We have realized most of you are on Facebook Live, even though you're in the house of God, amen. We don't want to raise up a weak people. We want to raise up a strong and powerful church who knows the word of God, amen. Hallelujah. So come with your Bible, come with your notebook, come with your pen. You know why? When you're on Facebook Live, you'll be distracted to look up to the notifications and to chat with your friends. Just come ready to focus so that we don't distract the flow of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Genesis 21, verse 1 and 2. And before we get into the Word, let us appreciate our pastor, George Omoso. Amen. Put your hands together for the man of God. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. The Bible says, shall we read together? The Bible says, and the Lord, please let's read together, because this word is for you. Personalize this service. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Read that again. And the Lord visited Sarah. We are in verse 1. Barbara, stay in the spirit. Hallelujah. And we thank God for you. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken, verse 2. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time which God had spoken to him. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had seen. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. And according to the set time God had spoken, he did it. Amen. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord, and the Lord did what? Hey, please wake up. And did unto Sarah as he had spoken. So God said, he visits, visited Sarah upon that word. And then God spoke and did according to what he said to Sarah. The title of my message this morning is God will do what he said. Hey, which church is this? Is this Catholic something church? Am I in JCC? Come on, shout hallelujah. Can I have a people who are full of the Holy Ghost? There is no lukewarmness here. There is no coldness here, amen? We're gonna preach together. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. If you're full of the Holy Ghost, you are powerful. You are in fire or on fire. Hallelujah. 
Amen. And this morning I bring you a word that says God will do what he said. Come on, say God will do what he said. I only had two people say God will do what he said. You are not telling me, you're telling yourself. Say, and the Lord visited Sarah. Feel your name there. And the Lord visited Holida. And his, he, as he had said, and the Lord did unto Holida as he had spoken. Come on, say that to yourself. And the Lord visited Holida as he had said. And the Lord did unto Holida as he had spoken. Today the Lord will visit me. I don't know about you. Today the Lord will do to me as he had spoken. I don't know about you. Hallelujah. I don't know who has said what about you. I don't know who has spoken in your life. But as for me, I know what God has said to me. And he's visiting me on that word. And he will do as he had spoken. When you look up Genesis 17, 16, God had spoken to Sarah that he will, give him a, he will give her a son. She shall be a mother of nations and kings of people shall be of her. God spoke to Sarah in the beginning, hallelujah. Before we come to verse, uh, chapter 17, verse 16, God had spoken to Abraham. Remember when the angel of the Lord showed up and then Abraham commanded his wife to make a meal for them. In the tent when Hara, Sarah, Sarah is dropped on the word of the Lord to Abraham. She laughed. Remember that laughter? That ridiculous laughter? Who can bear a child? How old am I? In old age. But in Genesis 17, 16, God himself spoke again to Sarah. The first time he spoke to Abraham, God can speak to you as well. Hallelujah. He said to her, I will give you a son. And you shall be a mother of nations. Remember he had first spoken to Abraham. That you shall be a father of nations. Now he comes to Sarah. In fact her name means mother of nations. And says according to your name. You shall be a mother of nations. And then he said and kings of people shall be of you. You shall not be a mother of nations. Not just a mother of mere people. You shall be a mother of kings. And listen to me. There was a waiting period. 25 years of waiting. Hallelujah. God was visiting Sarah upon the word. He had spoken to her, ready to perform it. But before this last visitation, there was a waiting period. God does not always pronounce the waiting period. He talks about the set time. He will come and say to you, I will make you a great woman of Allah. I will make you a business mogul. I will make you a lender to nations. I will make you a voice to reckon with. I will make you a joy to many generations. But most of the time, he will not pronounce to you how long it will take for that word to be manifested. And this is what matters the most. If that word has to be fulfilled in your life. If God will come this morning and visit you upon what he spoke to you. It depends on how your waiting period has been. There are many people who have heard the word of the Lord. But their waiting period has been a period of complaining, doubting, unbelief, grumbling. Hallelujah. They've been waiting with an attitude that like God, if you don't come, as you said, you won't find me here. But God will always set a time to perform his word. But it is not, he is not obligated to tell you how long you're going to wait. As for the waiting period, he says, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not faint. They shall walk. Hallelujah. He says for the waiting, if there is a word God has said concerning your life and destiny. He will come in your waiting period and arm you with strength. We talked about on Friday that God will strengthen you. Hallelujah. It is he that strengthens you. When you're waiting on God sincerely, genuinely, then you will not faint. I tell you, 
the reason why many people throw in the towel. I tell you the reason why many people give up is because they are not waiting on God. They are waiting on their employer to promote them. They are waiting on their friends to give them an appraisal. Hallelujah. They are waiting on people to give them handouts. If you are truly waiting on God, you cannot paint. Because those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. When your strength is dwindling, before you know it, you've mastered or garnered or received new strength from the Lord. Anyone that has given up, they were not waiting for God. They were waiting for their pastor to do, to do them a favor. They are waiting for a friend somewhere to give them a phone call. And because man can fail, but God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you to the close of age. Let me tell you, God does not visit a people without a purpose. Anytime you see God visiting the people, it is because he has invested his word upon that people. He said to Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. In the wilderness, these people People were still making idols and graven images. These people were still stiff net before God. But why would God keep telling Moses, gather the people in the tent? I will come and visit them because of the word that was upon them. God will not visit you because you're throwing tantrums. Hallelujah. God will not visit you because you are aging and Prince Charming has not come. God will not visit you because age is catching up with you and the baby has not come. If you're writing notes, write. God visit his word upon his people. He said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1 12, I watch over my word to perform it. Therefore, it is very important for you to align according to the word of God. Let every aspect of your life be aligned under the word of God. If you want to receive a visitation, hallelujah, you align yourself with the word. God visits the word, hallelujah. He does not visit people to hide them up or for them to feel good. Whenever God shows up, he is coming to do that which he said, hallelujah. And so if you're truly waiting on God, even if it will take two decades, he will find you waiting. The reason why God shows up to Sarah at this moment and says at a set time, a time like this next year, you shall be with son. is because Sarah was genuinely waiting on God. She was in the right place with the right attitude. Hallelujah. You don't suspend your praise until God comes through. You keep your praise going. You keep your worship going. You keep the group going going as you wait on the word of God. Hallelujah. You don't suspend your joy. In fact, as you're waiting on God, you're waiting in his presence. And in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. That joy is your strength. If you're really waiting on God, you abide the more in his presence because that's where you derive your joy, which is your strength. Hallelujah. What has God spoken to you? Numbers 23, 19. Ask yourself, what has God spoken to you? Take your mind back three seconds. Remember all the words of prophecy that have come upon your life. Remember that word that God quickened in your spirit in the place of prayer. Remember when you're studying the word and God just took made scriptures to stand out for you. Remember that rhema God gave you while you were waiting on him. Has God spoken to somebody? Anybody here can I see by the show of hand who's the word of the Lord has come upon? Did God say that he will heal that disease? Did God say that he will roll away that shame? Did God say that he will make you beautiful than you first began? Did God say that you will be a voice to reckon with? That you will heal the sick? That you will raise the dead. Did God say that no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life? Did God say that nations shall run to your voice because he has glorified you? Is there a word of God over your life? Did God say you are the next millionaire in town? Did God say that they are coming to glean from your wisdom, from your reservoir of grace? Did God 
God say that he is going to make you a sign and a wonder? Is there anybody here that has the word of God over them? Get ready for a visitation of God. Because today the spirit of the Lord say he will visit you upon that which is spoke over you. And he is not visiting you for the sake of it. He is coming, coming to perform his counsel. What has God spoken to you? God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? God is not a man to lie. He is not a son of who and who to repent. Has he not said it? Will he not make it good? Hallelujah. Have you heard from God? He is not a man to lie. Everything he said he will do, he will do. He does not need your input. He needs your faith. He does not need your money. He needs your faith. He does not need another degree from you. He needs your faith. He does not need anybody to agree with him. The word is already settled in heaven. He does not need a quorum to pass the motion. The word is already accomplished in the spiritual realm. If you can agree with God, it shall manifest in the physical realm. God will do that which he said. I know what God has said over my life. Every day when I talk to God, I remind him what he has said. Hallelujah. Because the word of God cannot return to him empty. Ezekiel 12, 25. For I am the Lord, I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. Can we read that together? Isn't this powerful? For I am the Lord, I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall not more be delayed or it shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it. Say ye the Lord. I am the Lord, I will speak. Let me see that man who will come to oppose my word. Let me see that situation who will come to, which will come to oppose my word. Let me see who can stand against my word. Who can stand against the counsel of the Lord. The Bible says who commanded a thing and it come to pass. It came to pass. If the mouth of the Lord has not spoken. Do not be afraid what naysayers have said about your life. Do not be afraid what your haters have scandalized you and allegations they've leveled against you. Who can command a being and it come to pass if the mouth of the Lord has not spoken. Even as I am speaking this word, it is coming to nullify every false accusation over your life, every slander, every scathing, every scarring of your uh, uh, destiny and your reputation. That word is coming to realign that which God has spoken over your life. No imagination, no thought, no voice can rise up against the intention of the word of God as God speaks that word is as good as done you can take it to the bank hallelujah you can bank on the word of God it doesn't matter whether you're in the grave it doesn't matter whether you're in the valley of the dry bones you can bank on his word I am the Lord I speak and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass it shall no be no more prolonged in your days will I say the word and will perform it that sayeth the Lord that word that God has spoken of your life over your life the spirit of God will have you know it shall no more be delayed it may look delayed but it shall no more be delayed he told Habakkuk write the vision make it plain upon the tables so that whoever reads it will run with it it may look like it has tarried but it should it should it shall surely come to pass it shall not delay hallelujah that word is sure it shall not delay God will not come in your time he will not come when you feel he should come he will come in the set time Psalm 102 verse 13 says that now God shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the set time there is an appointed time for everything let me say that again. There is an appointed time for everything. There is a time for God to speak and there is a time for God to perform. Hallelujah. There is an appointed time for everything. 
the teacher, Ecclesiastes, articulated this very well. There is a time for everything. So your time, which you feel that God should visit his word upon you, probably is not the time of God. God is not under pressure to come because you are in pressure or under pressure. Hallelujah. The Bible says he alters seasons as he so wishes. He enthrones kings and brings down others. That's how powerful God is. That means God can interject in a season. He can interrupt a season that is not conducive for your miracle. He can inter interject a season that is not favorable for your promotion. Hallelujah. And turn the tides away. He doesn't wait for the environment to be conducive. The word of God is not incubated here on earth. Hallelujah. The word of God is incubated by the Holy Spirit. And he has no limit as when to perform and to whom to perform it. Hallelujah. Elisha said in the, at the gates of Samaria, a time like this, there shall be a restoration. There shall be plenty in this land. It doesn't have to go, it doesn't have to, he, he didn't have to wait for the rain to fall and the crop to yield. He didn't have to wait for the economy to be resuscitated because the word of God has a mechanism to bring forth and to nurture and to make it look good. Hallelujah. The word of God can defy every limit, every order. The word of God can defy barriers and fire and barrenness hallelujah he said to Ezekiel go to the valley of the dry bones and he posed a question to Ezekiel can this dry bones leave I know many of you are standing in the valley of your dry bones you know what those dry bones are and you're asking can these dry bones leap can these pieces be made whole together again can i ever rise up again can i ever collect these dilapidated pieces again will i ever amount to anything my business has gone under my savings have gone down the drain my name has been scandalized my name has been maligned will i ever rise up again everything i put my power to build where I zeroed in my energy has been blown and vanished like thin air can I ever rise from these ashes but I hear I am here to let you know that God will do whatever he said he will do you could be in the middle of ashes but God can turn those ashes into beauty hallelujah God can work with anything he can work with ashes and make them very beautiful there is nothing to write home about ashes there is nothing to behold about ashes but if you can believe on what God has said concerning your life I know days are going years are catching up with you but that word has speed more than light to overtake every predicament every situation in your life that word is like a hammer that breaks into pieces rocks that word is like a sword that cuts a sender hallelujah that word is like fire consuming fire that can consume every barrier every mindset every ideology that word can give you a breakthrough that generations after you will never be able to bring power I get worried only if God has not spoken. I don't care what other people are saying about me. I am not your opinion. I am not your thought. I am not an afterthought. Before God formed me in the womb, he knew me. He consecrated me to be a prophet of nations, to plant and pluck down, hallelujah. God knew you before your mother and your father met. You were not an accident. You may have been born out of wedlock, but there is a word of God over your life. That is why you are not dead yet. There is a word of God over your life. That is why you didn't lose your mind when you stood up. There is a word of God over your life. That is why you are here today. 
the reason why God protects you with a jealous it is because of his word spoken over your life hallelujah that word can take you many years ahead even in the desert that word will keep you the reason why Israelites souls of their feet did not wear out some of these things I think about them and I am in awe of God I shudder at God how can a people baby walk in the wilderness 40 years men without shoes and the soles of their feet did not wear out I don't even need a sermon that is enough to carry me to the end of life how can a people teach a gen walk in the wilderness 40 years no clothes on them on the same clothes on their body they did not wear around do you wear the clothes you're wearing five years ago ten years ago you cannot even put the pieces together because why there was a word spoken over them that one will preserve you when you should be perishing that one will keep you going hallelujah whatever should be wearing away over your life that word will keep you going the reason they didn't wear out is because there was a word and God had not visited that word hallelujah you got no reason to give up until God comes visiting that word praise the Lord I don't know who I came from Exodus 9 5 to 6 the Bible says and the Lord appointed a set time saying tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. The Lord appointed a set time, saying tomorrow, like now. You better personalize that. You better declare it over your life. He said, I will do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing in the morrow. Hallelujah. He said tomorrow, I will make your life turn around. Do you know God can do it? God can turn around your life as you're seated here taking notes in the presence of the Lord. Kotaria Labaka Sokata. Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11. Isaiah 55, 10 to 11. Listen, the Bible says, For as the rain cometh down, and as the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it, maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goeth forth out of thy my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which i please it shall prosper in the thing whereto i sent it the word of god has potency to accomplish that which god said it cannot bounce back hallelujah I said the word of God cannot bounce back. I know right now it looks like it has bounced back because what God said five years ago, you have not gotten a hold of it. The word of God has potency to prosper in the thing where to his sent it. You may be failing right now, but his word shall produce results. Can somebody say the word of God shall produce results? And it has no feature of failure. Your failure is not God's failure. Your limitation is not God's limitation. That word upon you shall surely produce results. The Bible says, as I conclude, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord said unto Sarah as he had spoken, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Sarah was patient enough. Hallelujah. We all know she goofed somewhere. Amen. But she still clinged on to that word. There are many times we make mistakes in the place of waiting. Hallelujah. Our God is a merciful God. But so long as your unbelief, unbelief will not get a hold of you, you will surely see the manifestation of that word. And First Peter, uh, Paul said in First Peter 3, 6, that if you do good, and if you do not give way to fear, you are daughters of Sarah. How many of you are daughters of Sarah? The Bible says, if ye, are, ye be Christ, ye are Abraham's seed. How many of you are in Christ? Amen. You know, baby, we have people who only subscribe to New Testament. New Testament, no Old Testament. 
Yet Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law of Moses. I only came to affirm it. And he also said, if you are Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Hallelujah. And if you do good, you are not Sarah's daughter by default or by confessing. If you do good, this is what qualifies you to be Sarah's daughter. If you do good and you give, you don't give in to fear, you are Sarah's daughter. The same God who visited Sarah and as he had spoken and he did as he had said, that same God is able to visit you. It doesn't matter how barren that situation is. If God spoke it, it shall produce fruit. I said it doesn't matter how bad that situation is. If God has spoken a word concerning it, it shall be fruitful. It shall bring forth. Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones. Listen to how this happened. How the dry bones operated and rose up as a mighty army. He said, oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, God unto these dry bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. What did he say? Oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. The dry bones would not have risen as a mighty army unless dry bones, can they hear the word of God? Do they even have breath in the, same, in, the, in, the, in the first place? That tells you that objects can hear the word of God. Money can hear the word of God. That situation can hear the word of God. That sickness and pain can hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Any dead situation is able to hear the word of God. If you can open up your mouth and not say what you are saying, but say what he is saying, he will surely visit his word upon you and do it. I give you a reason to hold on to God. Ezekiel, Ecclesiastes said in 3.11 that he makes all things beautiful in his time. Hallelujah. He said to Eli, uh, uh, Moses, remember when they were leaving Egypt, they are between the Red Sea and the enemies of Pharaoh, chariots of Pharaoh are after them. Look at this. They have no way to flee. They cannot march on because the Red Sea is glaring at them. They cannot turn back. But what did God say to Moses? He sent a word. He said, the Philistines you see now, you shall see them no more. Hallelujah. You need to look at that mountain and tell it, you mountain that I see now, I shall see you no more. You dryness that I experience now, I shall experience no more. You pain that I feel now, I shall feel you no more Your sickness in my body I shall not host you again You don't pay rent with me Get out of here You're going to open up your mouth And reverberate the word of God Over that situation Echo the words of God Say I will live and not die Say I, will, I am here To make a statement I am not a statistic. I am not passing by to glory. I am here to execute the purposes of God. Declare that when others are falling by your right side and by your side, you shall not come near you. You shall only behold and see the recompense of the wicked. The Bible says a thousand may fall by your side, ten thousand by your right side, but it shall not come near you. Hallelujah. You shall only see what is bringing others down. It shall not bring you down. Amen. What is making others backslide? It shall not make you backslide. What is killing others? It shall not kill you. Hallelujah. You shall rise on the wings of an eagle. That business can thrive in the midst of fire. That situation can turn around. Hallelujah. I am in the world, but I am not on the world. I am funded from the government from whence I come. I am looked after from whence I come. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God said, I will make you a 
real estate mogul. I will make you an influencer, not a social media influencer, an influencer over nations, over territories. I believe on that word. It doesn't matter what I see, but I choose to believe. I declare we came to Kitengala not to conform, but to transform a people of God. We did not come to try the waters. We came to build an altar for God. We came to do the works of Christ until he comes back. I don't know how many have given us days to leave our feet planted on this place from upon one river the source of your boot shall stop I shall give you Hallelujah. when I look from Kachiado from Adi River I see God has given us a ranch a territory where we shall exercise his dominion I am here to submit to principality powers of darkness rulers of the air that we have lifted the name of Jesus in this place and when it's lifted he shall destroy all the works of the enemy let every work of the wicked upon your life be destroyed let every darkness over your life be, be removed yes. in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet, everybody. In the name of Jesus. Oh, did God say you are a prophet to the nations? Hallelujah. Did God say that He's called you to pastor? Hallelujah. Did God say that you are a supplier? Jesus. You are an entity. Do not waver from that word. It doesn't matter what you see. God shall visit. That which he said, he shall do. That which he spoke to you. Jesus. Come on, give glory to Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. We give you glory. Give glory to God. We give you glory. God said you are rising. Jesus. He didn't say you're going under. Hallelujah. That word, upon that word, Jesus. you will rise. Hallelujah. And as, as others are going In the name down. Of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have your hands to God. That which you say, that which you say, that which you say, that which you say, Lord, that which you say, Lord, you say,